G'day and welcome to today's model workshop. Um, I've got for you another update to my 135th scale scratch built anti gravity lighthouse thing, the seahorse. Um, so at the moment I'm just trying to work out how to make the lighthouse part actually work. I've been busy uh, since the last update, part 5 I think it was, so this is part 6. I've been busy since then detailing up the cabin. Uh, I might even zoom in so you can see a few of these details. So just adding lots of gizmos to the outside, some scratch made braces at the top there, a bit of a doorbell or key chime or something, uh, put a bit of weld lines on, Let's see if we can get focus, yeah did some weld lines around those seams that look like crap now but once they're painted they'll look okay put and mesh up the top on both sides finally got to put the window frames in which was a bit exciting and another staple ladder same as the one on the hull itself and that's a bit of an old French tank there oh, some psycho went past really fast um, yeah so I've been busy doing that I've also finished making the sandwiched roof for it so that will go on wobbly camera work. I might put the camera back down. That'll go on like that. Room for a crew member to climb up. And now I'm just in the process of trying to work out how to actually make this work. So I want to have railings around the top, make it feel kind of nautical. Here's my old headlight bulb that I plan to use for the actual light. But yeah, if I just plonk it on the top, it's a bit boring and also these bits poking out bother me they you know they would make it very hard for a crew member to actually get past on either side um, and I think it needs a little bit more height as well because if I've got God knows a helicopter if I've got a crew member standing there you know he's gonna be blind in the eyes every time that light revolves so I think it needs to be a little bit higher so I've been playing around with some bits and pieces old kit bits that feels better um, you know, stuff like this from the top of a yogurt, can you see it? Maybe not. Oh, too white. This thing from the top of a squeezy kid's yogurt, and yeah, it just makes it again too hard to walk past once you get a railing on there. Um, I was even considering a top of a Coke bottle. Yeah, perhaps not quite tall enough. So yeah, I'm just tweaking that sort of stuff right now. Um, I also have a mask that I want, and I'm not quite sure, again, whether to sort of... Very, very rough, guys. Very, very rough. Whether to have it coming out straight from the top of the Mars, uh, of the light, or whether to have the light a bit off-center and have the mask kind of here. Sorry, no focus, but you can see it by my hands are busy. Um, yeah, so just tweaking at the moment. But yeah, I'm happy with how the, the exterior of the cabin's looking now. Yeah, I decided I need to get rid of this sort of shroud that's around the narrow bit of the bulb. So I'm just trying to cut through it with some wire cutters because, um, I don't know, I could go downstairs and try and use a Dremel on it, but it's night time. And it's like 9.30 at night, I think it'll probably be a bit too noisy. So yeah, trying my best to cut through this. Um, I've realised that the uh, Australian Model Expo is on in about three months' time. And I've been working on this since September. So I've been working on this for about six months. And this is as far as I've gotten. So if I want to have an entry this year, I better pull my bloody finger out and do it. So, getting stuck in. So you'll be seeing a few more updates on this a bit more regularly because, yeah, I need to get my ass into gear. Anyway, I'm going to keep trying to butcher this thing off. Might hack at it with a screwdriver in a second. <clears throat> Professional. Ooh, I managed to get it off. Here it is. The Germans make very, very strong headlight surrounds, that's all I can say. Made in Germany. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, respect, guys. Respect. Um, yeah, and I didn't manage to destroy any of my fingers, which was good. A couple of little dings on the actual surround, though, so I might have to hide those with a bit of creative gizmology. But yeah, 
I am set to start making my lighthouse now. Nice. I have finally decided that I'm going to use this, which is an old medicine bottle, as my lighthouse um, surround, my glass. Previously I had been considering using this plastic test tube thing, but I think that this will give me a better result. So I've worked out where I want it, uh, I've made a mark around the edge, just about there, with a the scalpel on it, and now time to saw it, and hopefully saw it nice and even and straight. Because I really don't want to mess about having to try and grind this down to get it straighter. So I'm using a razor saw, and fingers crossed, I get it right first time. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm not going to bore you with this. I'll come back in a moment. And now, look at all this stuff. Woo! Serious. Soldering irons, drills, pliers. I'm making my railing around the deck uh, where the lighthouse will be. And yeah, I'm planning to use wire and solder it together. I don't often do soldering because I'm not that great at it, but I picked up this cheapo soldering iron at Aldi a year or two ago for like 15 bucks, I think. And yeah, I've been thinking, oh, do I put styrene rods and stuff? And yeah, it's too hard, it's too fragile. I'm going to go for metal, try and not stuff it up. So I've marked out where each of my poles is going to go. I'm going to transfer that to my piece of test wood here, make like a little jig for it, and then hopefully it'll work. I can heat them up and solder them and they won't melt the plastic. If I spill a bit of solder, it won't melt the plastic. Fingers crossed, it works. Here goes. Here's my jig. Yeah, I think that'll work. Feels pretty good. And now I have to bend this piece of wire and make it work around the top of them all. Wish me luck. I'm not going to video this because I think there'll be a lot of swearing. It looks tiny bit wonky, but once it's soldered, I think I'm going to be okay. <laughs> it looks so wonky. I think we'll be okay. Well, about an hour's soldering later, that's what I've got. It's okay. I'm happy with it. Bit of work still to do. Bit of clean up. But uh, once I drill the holes in the styrene, I think I'm good. I was going to solder the second layer on as well, but uh, no, I'm just going to super glue that much quicker. Yeah. Good to push yourself. And that is the railing done. <clears throat> so look, luckily I'm going for a rustic look. Hey, because otherwise it would look a bit shit if I was trying to make it look really polished and beautiful and sophisticated. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's move on. I'm busy at the moment trying to work out how to make a crane for the fore deck of the spaceship anti-grab thing. Um, I did originally buy this photo etched brass jobby, but it's a hand crank and I don't know, it just feels too unhigh tech for a ship that can float with anti-gravity power. So I'm thinking save that for another time. And instead I'm going to scratch build something of my own. So I've got this, which is like, I think it's the wheel stroke foot of a robot toy from the 1980s that has been floating around in my spares pile since the 1980s. I think it was my little brother's. Don't tell him. And um, I'm thinking that upside down could make quite a good small crane. I also have this piece, which is a wing strut from a 132nd Westland Lysander, a couple of Daimler engine mounts from I think a 132nd Messerschmitt BF110. I've got a sort of trailer thingy from a, a 135th Katushka. Um, just bits and bobs and pieces here. I'm going to try and scratch build something that looks plausibly like a crane. Let's see how I go. Well, I've been busy working away on my crane. Um, using some styrene to build the top, build the end. Um, originally I had thought oh, I'm going to have a great hook on the end here, but 
it just looks like a toy. So, piece of bent wire, it's very Captain Hook, isn't it? Um, gonna get rid of that and instead replace it with a little mount for a machine gun on the end. I think that's gonna feel a bit more interesting and crany. Um, using some styrene pieces just to build pulleys and the like, something like that. Still kind of trying to work out how to use this. I found this interior of a T-34 front hatch. I thought, oh yeah, that could work quite nicely on the top. It's sort of, you know, got texture and bits and pieces on it, so I think that's probably going to work nicely there. Um, built this out of my engine mounts. So it's going to give me something for the chain to come up on and then down onto this piece here. Gives you the idea of how it's going to look. So it's coming along. Um, you may have noticed these bits here. So this was my attempt at making a life preserver, a 135th scale life preserver uh, <laughs> with air drying DAS modeling clay. As you can see, <laughs> some of them are definitely better than others. Bloody hell. That's... All it was was roll out a sausage and then try and make a circle out of it. Jeez. Um, so I've got one that I'm actually relatively happy with. It's still a bit dodgy, but uh, I'm thinking the details on it, like the sort of rope surrounds and stuff, and the, the hook that it will hang from will hide the worst of the blech, bad bits. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm going to keep on going with the crane, and uh, hopefully I have something to show you guys very soon. It's not just bits and pieces like this. And here's the crane. It's, you know, about 95% finished. Fairly happy with it. Just need to add lines, like the actual chains and rigging and cables and stuff like that. But yeah, fairly happy with it. I feel like it looks fairly industrial and also, you know, fairly rustically made. Uh, fair, fair few bits of detail. Yeah, I'm going to make myself a hook out of this piece of styrene here now, so rather than a, a wire hook, I'm going to actually cut out a hook shape for it to go on the end of the chain. But yeah, I'll show you that one. It's not very stable. I'll show you that in just a tick. Righto, here's my hook template, very sketchily sketched on there. It's quite thin styrene, so I'm just going to cut very roughly around the shape and get it to a point where I can actually file it down. I might even use my trusty scissors here. See how that works out. Yeah, it's probably easier actually. Getting there already. Right, now this probably isn't the most fascinating piece of video for you guys, but, you know, I guess it gives you an idea of how I work. It's good to have it in front of the camera. So this is extraordinarily rough at this stage. Cutting through. Right. One extraordinarily rough hook. So now I'm going to start sanding it down, get it to a place where it actually is a lot smoother than this really, really bad shape. I'm not going to bore you with video of sanding. You guys know how to sand. Part way there, you can see how the left hand side is already 
a lot smoother and that's been literally 30 seconds of sanding. Next up, a round needle file to file into the sort of hollow of the hook. Got my 10 piece needle file set that cost me $2 from what a bargain. What a bargain. Oh shit, they're a bit rusty. Um, yeah, round needle file. And I'm just going to go at it. And hopefully get the effect I'm after. Better if I do it in camera. Ideally I want to be going rather than side to side, round, round, round like this. I have to cut out a bit more. with. Yeah, that's a little better already. Alright, I'm going to keep filing. I'll come back. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, it's 90% of the way there. I've got two little bits of styrene that I've sanded the edges, rounded the edges on, and I'm going to put each... Oh, I don't know if you can see it there. Yes, you can. If I put a bit of shadow you're going to put each of them there just as a bit of sort of added strength and then drill a hole right about here to go through the hook just to give it a bit of extra you know sort of texture and depth here we go one hook it's got a little bit of texture and it is much much better than where I was originally which was that out of a piece of bent wire oh my god I can't believe I was even planning that yeah there's my hook. Happy with that. And now it's time to do the life preserver. So, I think I showed you earlier. Absolutely abysmal earlier attempt I made. This was the best of a bad bunch. And I'm going to try and hide the worst of it so you can see. Sort of here, there's a bit of a big crack in it. And there's pretty irregular shapes. I'm going to try and hide the worst of those with these bits of lead foil. And basically, I've got a bit of twine here. The plan is wrap the red foil, wrap the lead foil around at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then put a bit of PVA glue over the twine to keep it fairly rigid. That's the plan. I'm going to go ahead now. You can already see I've done the first one there. Pretty straightforward. Just working on the second one now. with this so far. Done! One, one thirty-fifth scale life preserver. Uh, once that's painted up red and sort of fluorescent, white and sort of fluorescent ready orange in quarters, I reckon that's going to look the part. And scale wise, it's pretty good. And that's going to just hang off the interior of my sort of railings of my ship. So yeah, I'm happy guys. It just needs a little bit of Diluted PVA glue on those uh, bits of twine just to hold them in place, but yeah, I'm happy. I'm very happy. It's good. Cool. Alright, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed my latest update on my scratch build sci fi ship. Um, chime in below with any comments if you have any. Otherwise, yeah, I'll catch you next time. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and yeah, see you next time, guys. Bye.